In this video, I'm going to be changing the engine oil and filter as well as the transmission oil on this 1939 John Deere H. To change the engine oil and filter, we're going to come up under the tractor here. See that big round cover with a hex head? That's where the oil filter is. So I'm going to remove the square headed drain plug just below it and let the oil drain into my catch pan that I'll get here in just a second. Then I'm going to pop that uh, cover off that housing and pull the old filter out. Well, you can see I've got the plug out as well as that uh, filter housing and filter off. So the plug is full of junk, a little grungy stuff. It kind of feels a little gritty. I don't feel any chunks or anything, so that's a good thing. Um, the uh, filter's got a little bit of sludge sort of on the corners there. I don't know if you can see that. That would have been the bottom of the filter. And the housing here, hopefully it's showing up on camera. I can see some sort of sludge sort of sitting down there. I'm going to take a clean rag and wipe that sludge out of there. And the uh, capacity here, this pan held it no problem. The book says that the engine contains four and a half quarts of oil. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these parts cleaned up and I'll show you what we're putting back into the thing. So we're pretty well about done dripping. I uh, cleaned that housing out much as I could. Um, got in there with some paper towels and these long handle forceps, if you guys don't have a pair of them, they're real handy for, you can like pinch a rag or a towel and cram it back into a spot like that where I couldn't reach my hand. Um, so then uh, when I went to pick out the old gasket or O-ring, whatever you want to call it, it's not really an O-ring, it it's a round rubber gasket. When I went to pick out the gasket, man, it was really in there. And I got the first one out and I start like scratching around. I'm going to scratch the housing and clean it up. And I realized there's another gasket in there. So there was two gaskets in there, which I'm guessing maybe the last guy to do this didn't realize there was a gasket in there and just shoved another one in. I don't know. Typically when you double up on gaskets, you cause a leak, you know. So I wouldn't think it was because there was a leak issue. I, I don't know. So anyhow, that's kind of interesting. Um, this, uh, this housing, I went ahead and I put, I put the housing in the plug in my little parts washing setup here. So the housing cleaned up pretty good. Um, just real quick while we've got it off, I'll show you guys. So on the inside of that bolt head, there is a copper washer there. And this assembly is, it's, you know, a real short bolt more or less with a spring. Can you see that spring under there, this plate? And then the whole thing is held together. There's a snap ring right there. So my copper washer looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse it. But if you were, if you were experiencing leaks right here, um, this is how you would disassemble it and change out your copper washer. Uh, I cleaned the plug up and I put a little Teflon tape on that ready to go back in. Um, I'm, I'm big on Teflon tape on, you know, if it doesn't, on plugs and stuff, something that doesn't have a gasket on it, I'll go ahead and put Teflon tape. Um, it, when I was cleaning the plug, I was, I was feeling the material, that sludge that I was getting out of there. I didn't feel any slivers or chunks of metal or anything like that, so I think we're pretty good shape, you know, engine health. Uh, what we're going back with is uh, I'm going to put a Baldwin. This is a PT62. It comes with the filter and the gasket, and this is not an O-ring. This not, it's not round. The, this is angular. You know, it's got square corners on this, on this round gasket. So um, when you order the filter, it comes with a gasket in the box. Just a little precursor to the oils that I'm putting in the thing. In case you guys don't want to watch the whole video, I'm putting in 30 weight and 85 140 in the transmission. Of course, 30 weight goes in the engine, 85 140 in the transmission. And I'm going to reference the weights in this video. Keep in mind that when I say the book calls for, that means the book calls for whatever weight oil in the temperature range that I expect to use this tractor. In the book, it calls for anywhere from a 50 weight to a 20 weight on the engine oil, I believe. I know it's 50, 40, 30 for sure on the chart, depending on the temperature, the ambient temperature that you'll be operating the tractor in. Same thing on the transmission. It calls for a thicker oil 
the hotter you're running at ambient temperature. Now I'm looking at the temperature range of, I think it was 65 Fahrenheit, 65 to 90 degrees outside temperature. That's when we're running this tractor. So keep that in mind when I talk about what the book calls for on oils. I'm going back with 30 weight. The book calls for 40. I can't find 40 anywhere. I could find a 1540, but I don't like the idea of that 15 being so thin. So anyhow, I'm going back with just a straight 30 weight. I am going to go ahead and uh, reinstall the filter and plug, and then the oil will dump it in. And I'll show you where the oil gets dumped in. Again, this calls for four and a half quarts. I went ahead and got six just because. Right here, this cap, this is where I'll be pouring the oil in. Okay, so I've got the uh, filter back in there. I'm not thrilled with the size of that gasket. It was uh, a little smaller than I would like. I had to kind of kind of massage it to get it to get it in there. The diameter of it was kind of small, and then once I got it in there, it didn't fill that ledge or that little lip as well as I'd like. I feel like it's sealed up okay, but I'm not thrilled about it. The other thing is the diameter of the filter itself, that hole in the center on this one is smaller than that one. I, did, I didn't notice that until I got them up here. Um, so anyhow, it went back in there, but I'm not super thrilled with it. Looks like it'll work just fine, but uh, it could be better. That, that, you know, I, I contemplated put, using one of them old gaskets, but I didn't want to use that old rubber. So I did go ahead and use the new one. Uh, got the plug back in. And I went ahead and uh, I dumped the first quart in and I realized, shoot, I was going to clean that, uh, this level bolt here. I don't even know what you call this exactly. This is where you check the oil level. So this bolt head, let me get my light set up here. To check the oil, you back this bolt out. This, this fixture stays, you know, with the tractor. You back this bolt out. In fact, I'll take it all the way back out. I thought, man, this would be a great time to get in there and clean that. So I cleaned the threads up because these things get all grungy. Because um, to actually check the oil, you back this bolt out. You can see that it's got that taper on it. That makes a seat inside there, and that seals up. So when you're uh, in normal operation, this bolt is in, and it's seated all the way, and that seals up. To check your oil, you back this bolt out a little bit. And there's a hole down here. There's actually a hole on top, but you typically, the oil will drip, drip. So you crack that open, wait for a couple little drips. You know you got enough oil in there, and then you just tighten it back up. Of course, you put a wrench on it, snug it up a little bit. Don't go crazy here. Don't over-tighten the thing. So anyhow, I took the opportunity while the case is empty to go ahead and clean the threads up, get the grunge off of there. And now I've got it backed out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to dump the oil in here. I got one quart in, so it should take about three and a half more, and I'll be watching for oil to start dripping out down there. At about three quarts, I'll really start watching. Well, there's quart number four, and we're dripping down here, so we're all full up. Go ahead and tighten that up. Get my wrench put on there and give it just a little bit of snug. Again, don't over tighten that. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that out of there. Wipe up our mess. Dribble just a little bit here and there. Let's see. Yeah, there's the wrench, three quarter. Snug, not tight. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up this mess and uh, we'll move on to the transmission. Okay, so moving on to the transmission, you can tell I'm at the rear of the tractor and the draw bar you'll notice is off to one side. So there are, normally guys are gonna have bolts in, let's see, get my light here for you. Normally guys will have bolts in, you know, one of these holes or, or rather two of these holes to position that draw bar either straight back off to one side, you know, depending on the implement or whatever. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be dead nuts in the center. So 
I took out, you can see this bolt sitting here, I took that bolt out, was in that hole, and that allowed this drawbar then to pivot over. And pivot it to the left will clear the plug. If you pivot to the right, it will not clear the plug. And the plug that I'm talking about is up under here. It's fairly easy to get to. Can you see that there? That big plug right there? We're going to stick a uh, ratchet extension in there. What is that? 3 eighths? And we're going to pull that plug out. I'll have my pan down here. Now this one might make a bit more of a mess with my pan. Keep in mind that the book calls for three gallons of fluid in here. So depending on the size of your pan, depending on your situation, my pan probably will hold two gallons. So I don't know. We're going to, might be kind of messy here. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and get the pan under there, get the plug pulled out, and that's it. There's no filter or anything on the transmission. So I pulled my plug out, and I was very happy to see that there wasn't much sludge. This is a solid top plug, so I was very happy to see there wasn't any really any sludge at all on it. I went ahead and hit the threads with a wire brush and then put some Teflon tape on it. So it's ready to go back in as soon as it quits dripping. I was also very happy to see the color of the fluid that came out was uh, more, it was a lighter color than I expected. You guys ain't gonna be able to see it all, but it was sort of like a dark honey color, which makes me think that that fluid was not that old. So um, somebody's changed that within reason. Uh, also another thing that I saw that I really liked or that I didn't see that I really liked was no water. It's not, it wasn't gray or milky. I didn't see any water at all. Um, normally, or a lot of times, if there's water in a case, you crack that plug, the first thing that comes out will be the water. Then the, the oil will come after that. And a lot of times that oil will be milky. That was not the case here. It was a dark honey color throughout, no chunks, no sludge. So I'm pretty happy about that. It's still dripping just a little bit, but I have removed this uh, little check plug here. So on the side of the case, Man, this camera does a terrible job of light. It is not that dark in here, guys, I promise you. So on the side of the case here, to check the level of oil, there's a little plug on the side here, a little square-headed plug. You see I got the plug sitting there on the ground, but it goes in that hole right there. So in relation to the hand starter or the flywheel, right behind it with a little square-headed plug. So I've got the plug out, and I'm going to leave it out. I'm going to go ahead and pull this plug. This is the fill hole. That takes a three-quarter inch drive, so um, keep that in mind. A lot of guys don't have a three-quarter inch drive. Um, but anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and pop that plug out, and then I'll put my, once that quits dripping, I'll put the plug in there, and the fluid that we're going to be putting in is this 85 140. Now the book calls for 140. Again, I can't find straight 140. All these guys are going to a multi viscosity oils. And I mean, I called all the local parts guys. I'm talking to my mom and pop farm and tractor store, you know, the guys that, that are into these old tractors and nobody has got straight 140 gear oil. So I'm going with the best thing that's available to me, and that's 85 140. A lot of guys will run 90 weight in theirs anyhow, but the book does call for 140. So uh, according to the book, again, this should take 12 quarts or 3 gallons. Now, I'll tell you, when I popped that drain plug out, I bet I didn't get 2 gallons out. So maybe the book's a little different, or I, when I, I should have checked the level of oil first. And I didn't. I just knew it needed to be changed. So I should have checked the level. That would have given me an idea of how much was in there. But the book calls for three gallons. I went ahead and picked up four just to be safe. Never hurts to have a little on hand in case you need it later on anyhow. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this plug put back in. And we'll start dumping oil in it. You can see I got the uh, fill plug off. And again, that takes a 
three quarter inch drive, which, you know, I've got a three quarter inch set over there under the bench. It's kind of a pain to get it wrangled out. Um, and for something like this that I know isn't gonna take much torque, I've got an adapter. They, they sell these a half to three quarter at Harbor Freight. Let me show you guys this little kit you can get. That might save you having to run out and buy a uh, three quarter inch kit. See, there you go. It comes with uh, three different adapters. So hopefully that'll help you. You can see you got the plug back in. So I uh, dumped in 11 quarts and that's where it started, uh, started coming out the little square plug down there at the 11th quart. So I uh, got everything all buttoned up, wiped back off, got my draw bar straightened up. And um, now when I get the thing running, because it's not running right now. So I'm waiting on some parts for the fuel system to get the tractor running again. When I get it running, I'm going to go ahead and run it, you know, operate the engine, operate the transmission. I'll probably drive it around out in the driveway for, I don't know, five or ten minutes bring it back in and double check to make sure that, you know, we worked out any air that might be causing any issues in the transmission. Make sure our level's good. I, f I feel confident that the transmission level won't change, but that engine oil, you know, it's gonna circulate through the filter. We may end up adding a little bit more engine oil. So I hope I helped you with this one, guys. If I did, click that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos of me working on old tractors or boats or, I got a 66 Mustang convertible. I do some videos on it every now and again. Click that subscribe button. You get to see all them videos. Until the next time, keep on tankering.